Welcome to another edition of Rival Scott Mitchell, Jason Buck here. That's right, folks. Jason Buck is here, and he's here as the dynamic duel has now returned. I can't tell you how excited that I am to have my good buddy Jason back in the fold. Of course, right now he is in uh, Illinois, somewhere just short, uh, just north of Chicago, coaching yeah. his son-in-law's football team, seventh graders, to yeah. a Super Bowl championship. And so, yes, Jason will be coming back with more championship rings, just what I always wanted. <laughs> How <laughs> are you, Jason? Back. The bugs is back, but man, it, nothing's better than coaching your seventh grade grandson. I'm just telling you, it's a a great, great, great memory. Some I couldn't pass up. Yeah, it's 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 exciting. I loved coaching my kids, so I, I don't have grandkids, and uh, I'm sure it would be fun to coach them. But that, I'm I'm really happy for you. Okay, we want to talk about, uh, of course, what's on everybody's mind around here, and yeah. that is uh, kind of uh, your observations on the football seasons of BYU and Utah. And just what you've seen, you know, so far this season, and then maybe what you think uh, looking forward. So let's start with BYU. Um, did you did you expect so six games into it, BYU's three and three? Would you say that at this point that's a good place for BYU to be? Uh, well, no, it's great. It's never a great place to be. I, it's about where I expected them to be, a little better than I thought. I never expected them to win at Wisconsin, honestly. And you were there, right? Yeah, yeah, I went to Wisconsin. What, 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 what was that? What was that like? Oh, it was awesome. It is what, dude. I'm telling you, it's what American college football is all about. That is such a football town, and I I pull in there with. Uh, my grandsons and my son-in-law and, and his dad, who played at BYU, Mark Brady, we're all we're all we all go in there for the for that game. And you walk the street, you got to park a couple miles away from the stadium, and you you walk that that street um, that's just for the colleges and all the college hangouts and everything. And it is a sea of red. I mean, for as far as you can see, a sea of red. You know, a sea of red isn't a bad thing, Jason. What's that? Oh. A sea of red oh. is not a bad thing. Come on. Throw in the U. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's no, a great it's a great atmosphere. Very exciting. Oh. It was amazing. The stadium was packed with uh, whatever eighty thousand plus people. They were the fans were just great to us. They treated everybody you know I thought from BYU great. And uh, just what a, what a great college football day. So you come in that place and it is packed. And uh, me and Mark Brady actually ran the BYU flag, you know, out on the field. And oh, nice. Front, uh, yeah, yeah, for the team. So, you know, it was a fun day. And I stood on the sideline, you know, and uh, watched the game from the sideline um, with Mark and Chad Lewis and Lee Johnson and some of the other friends there. And it really enjoyed a great football day. So, I mean, so man, did it was you, a great win for BYU. Yeah, it was. And did you think, at, watching that game, go, hey, this BYU football team is really good. Or, yeah. or were you kind of like, well, you know, maybe this was a little bit of an anomaly. Maybe Wisconsin wasn't as as good as people thought they were. Or I mean, what what did you see when you were watching that game? You know, BYU looked good to me. I, I really liked their offense in that game. They came out in a big package, you know, ran a lot of fly motion and uh, eye back stuff. And I was surprised, right? I was like, well, I didn't think they were, you know, going to do that. And, and man, it controlled the clock. And, and the defense played good enough just to stay in the game. And, you know, Wisconsin never put them away. Yeah. And uh, you could tell Wisconsin would come and open up a little bit and, and start to pound. And you're like, okay, it's going to start coming. And then BYU would make a play and it fizzle out on Wisconsin. So I think, I think they caught Wisconsin fat and happy. No, no doubt, but they looked really good. They looked like they deserved the win. All right, so, so I feel like, you know, because now we're three games ahead of that, it feels like BYU kind of stayed in Wisconsin. It's like they yeah. never left. So, so give me your impressions of, of since then, and, and what do you see with uh, BYU moving forward? You know, uh, of course, you know, they just have, you don't even count them in the state game, but, uh, you know, and Washington's a tough place to play. Going up there, you know they they rolled they rolled BYU, and uh, and BYU looked like we kind of expected it was going to happen this year, and and then Utah State, 
was just really disappointing in the sense that, you know, Utah State came down to Provo and they they just beat BYU in every facet of the game. They were the better team, weren't they? Oh, yeah, it wasn't like BYU, Utah State was lucky. They were the better team. And and it was clear that Utah State was the better team. Is is that is that a hard thing? Is that a hard thing to hear? Because oh. because you you you've always looked at at BYU as the better program. It's had Absolutely. it's had a better history and and Utah State was the better team. I mean they they were they were better on defense, they were better on offense. Uh yep. they really put it to BYU and did that surprise you? Did did it surprise you that it was that way? The level that they did it did surprise me. I thought Utah State had been getting much better as a program and I thought they could come in and beat BYU because you know they were you know, they returned a lot of players from last year and knew Utah State was going to come in as a really good football team. But I did not expect them to, you know, just dominate the game at the level they did. I did not. Yeah. But you, you watch it and you're like, oh, man. I, I, I just turn, because I don't miss very many of the BYU games. I, I see almost every one of them. And, and, and the Utah games, we turn them on. We're out here in Chicago, but we're watching all of our, you know, home state teams, Utah State, whenever they're on. And we try to watch them. And, you know, watching that, I just turned to my wife, Roxy, and said, I cannot believe this. I said, that right there shows you what it means to be in a conference versus being independent. I'm telling you, the decline of BYU since going independent and the rise of Utah State going in a conference has been exactly what happened to Utah State back in, you know, the 70s when they went independent and BYU and Utah went into a conference. Yeah, and 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 Utah State's now gotten into the Mountain West Conference and and it certainly yeah. has some prestige to it. And they're yeah. doing well. They've got a legitimate shot at actually winning the conference this year. Uh, they're playing very well as a football team. So yeah. so there's been a little sure. bit of controversy uh, and this is this is my last thought about BYU and then we'll get to Utah. But um, there's some rumblings. So should you start putting the young quarterback, Zach Wilson, in the game? Should, should he get some playing time now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the coaches ultimately know that situation better than anybody, just being at every meeting, every practice, and having that gut feel for it. But I, I would. And I, I don't know why they changed their offensive package at Utah State versus what they did against Wisconsin. Yeah, I I honestly don't get it. Yeah, and, and re- relied more upon Mangum. You're not going to win games with Mangum. At, yeah. You know, setting back in a shotgun, throwing the ball like he's Mark Wilson. He's he's not, right? He's just not that guy. So you come out with a big package and you have the success that you had against Wisconsin. You stay in that, and keep it very simple for the quarterbacks because that's what you have right now. But you know their season, they're three and three. They're they're entering into the softer part of their schedule, so BYU should still be bowl eligible this year. But that doesn't fix the problem that they're in, obviously, yeah. or the pro the state of the program. Would that be a good thing if they if they actually um, are bowl eligible? Would you say that's a success for BYU if that happens? Well, at, at this point in the program, that's a success. You know, it's disappointing for those of us that were there in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the silver years. lining here for you, Jason. I'm trying to help you out. No, I mean, I'm honestly, it, it's, a, it's a small victory for the school because you definitely want to at least be bowl eligible. That's better than last year, and and you're, you're moving forward. But they've got to solve their big picture problems. I'd go with the younger quarterback right now, you know, and uh, and start developing them and see – and you know, build for the future, but they're in a tough spot, and they've, they've got to fix the big picture, get in a conference, and get the recruiting going that you can get while you're on a conference, and and rebuild that program at the level that we used to be in, because right now it's in a decline. Yeah. A year ago, Matt Wells at Utah State actually brought in Jordan Love and and, and just started playing him, and, and he knew that he had a lot of potential, and and he did well a year ago and uh, learned a lot and kind of went through that maturing process, that development process, because you know how important playing is 
to your development. There's just no better teacher than experience. And there's and and they they'll even tell you that it's it's a huge part of the success they're having this year is because they they let him play a year ago. And so I'm I'm very much in favor of, of Zach Wilson uh, yeah. playing because you know quite frankly I think you can win three more games this season with him playing at quarterback, and that that makes you bowl eligible because because you're right, Tanner Mangum's kind of hit his ceiling. You know you're not going to get he's not going to get any better than what he is right now. You know, no. He's not going to not going to be a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in the next no. six games. So that's not going to happen. No. All right, let's go. Let's go to Utah. And uh, you actually, we got to see each other at the Northern Illinois game. You actually came out to the game. That was really fun. That was uh, fun. They, you know, there was a lot of expectation about this team going into the season and and how uh, most talented team Kyle Whittingham's had across the board, offense, defensively. And, and so there was a lot of expectation that the Pac-12 in general is down. The Pac-12 South specifically is way down. So there's a huge opportunity to win. And then, and then the team starts out 2-0, didn't look really good against Northern Illinois, oh. and, and played a, you know really a very poor game against Washington and started to kind of get it going a little bit against Washington State. And then this last week against Stanford, I mean, everything was just really clicking on all cylinders. And, and they beat a very good Stanford team who was 14th ranked in the country at Stanford. So where, what, what is your, you know, what's your take on Utah here, and where, where do you think they are? Well, before Stanford, before Stanford, and going up to the NIU game when I drove up there and you know, saw you down on the field and everything, and we watched that game. That uh, I, I was just so so in that game, right? NIU looked pretty good. They right. gave they, they gave Utah everything they wanted in that game, and uh, I think even NIU would, could probably beat BYU in Provo this year. Um, they're, they're they're pretty they're undefeated in the MAC, I think, right now. Still, so they're they're pretty solid. But Utah just didn't. Man, you're right. It was just they're ton of talent, and it just wasn't clicking, right? You just weren't feeling it. And the D-line, I like their defense, but the defensive line just doesn't get the get the pressure, you know, that the I like to see right. in the uh, off the blocks and the, the flying around the tackles and that kind of thing. But overall, the defense is very good. And then it's – and you're thinking, oh, man, this is what Scott's always talked about, that Kyle just can't quite get that team over the hump, you know, and into that championship mode. And – uh and that's what I saw those first four games. And then, man, Stanford days went in, and they looked like they were hitting on all cylinders. So, if they, dude, if they can get, if they can play and stay consistent and not have a letdown, now that they had that big confidence booster at Stanford, they, they got a shot at doing it, right? Yeah. And, and I, now you got to see I, if they don't fall back down, which they have a tendency to do. Right. And and what I think it is is it's a young team that's talented, and so you kind of have these growth spurts and and yeah. and it's more so on the offense the defense has played pretty solid all year yeah. but the offense is just trying to figure out how to how to win football games and i think the coaches are trying to figure out how to what the players do best specifically tyler huntley cuz zach moss running the ball it's something they do well and if they can build off of that and play action pass and move huntley around and not have him stay in the pocket, they, they can be a very explosive offense. So, I, and, and the South is just there for the, for the picking. And so I hope, I hope it's that way because um, Kyle Whittingham, he does, and, and I think a lot of Kyle and what he's done there, but, but they're, they're, this is just an absolute gift of an opportunity for Utah to win, to win the South. And who knows, it maybe is. they could meet Washington in the, in the Pac-12 championship, which would be an exciting thing for Utah football. There's no reason then now that you see how they can put a game together against Stanford, now there's just no excuses. If you got if you're a real champion and you're taking care of business and you're taking care of business in that locker room and you're coming out ready to play every week and you're preparing every week like you did for Stanford, there's no reason they shouldn't win out, right? No question. So, right? Because you, no, uh, yeah, you see what yeah. they can do. No, there's if they let down, it's their fault. There's not a team on their schedule left. Uh, they'll have a tough game against Oregon, but but the rest, I mean, and Oregon's not great either. But, but uh, so so there's absolutely a chance for them to do it, and and I'm having fun calling the games and all that. It's been a lot of fun. All right, this episode of Rivals is now over, Jason. Dude, it's so good to be with you, but we're off to our corners. We're going off to our corners. I'm not Jason Buck. 
And I'm not Scott Mitchell, but we're together again. <laughs> and we are related. All right, you can text Rivals to 65537. Go to those social sites. Like us, dial us in on that phone of yours. Until then, we'll catch you soon.